Now we have to talk about another transformation which is called horizontal stretch. What does this entail? Let me explain this to you. The question is how to plot the graph of f of ax from the graph of f of x where there is some positive real number. Again, two cases arise. One, when a is greater than 1. Other, when a is a fraction strictly between 0 and 1. Let's begin with case 1. That is how to plot the graph of f of ax from the graph of f of x where a is a number strictly greater than 1. We'll understand the answer of this question from an example. So in here, I have the graph of f of x equal to sin x with me. I am interested in plotting the graph of f of 2x, which is sin of 2x. So in here, my a is equal to 2, which is greater than 1. Let's use the conventional method to plot this graph. If I take x as 0, sin 2x becomes sin of 2 into 0, which is sin 0, which is 0. So I get the point 0 comma 0. Next, if I take x as pi by 4, sin 2x becomes sin of 2 into pi by 4, which is sin pi by 2, which is 1, right? So I get pi by 4 comma 1. Next, if I take x as pi by 2, sin 2x becomes sin of 2 into pi by 2, which is sin pi, which is equal to 0. So I end up getting pi by 2 comma 0. Next, I take x as 3 pi by 4, so sin 2x becomes sin of 2 into 3 pi by 4, which is sin 3 pi by 2, which is minus 1. And hence, this point becomes 3 pi by 4, comma, minus 1. Lastly, when I take x as pi, sin 2x becomes sin 2 pi, which is 0, and hence, I get pi, comma, 0. When I join these points, I get this to be the graph of sin 2x in the interval 0 to pi. Okay? Now, tell me one thing. If x lies here between 0 to pi, then obviously pi plus x lies between pi and 2 pi. Yes, I am interested in sine 2x. That means sine of twice of pi plus x, which is sine of 2 pi plus 2x. Now, sine of 2 pi plus anything is sine of that thing. So, this is sine 2x. That means what? That means what? Whatever is the graph of sine 2x in the interval 0 to pi, exact same is the graph of sine 2x in the interval, which is pi to 2 pi. Do you agree? Yes. And now it's time for you to do some real observation. So you have two graphs in here in the Cartesian plane. The green one is sine x and the pink one is sine 2x. If you carefully look at these coordinates that I have marked, you know, deliberately, you will see that in here at pi by 4, sine 2x is becoming 1. Whereas sine x becomes 1 at pi by 2. Yes. Then sine becomes 0 at pi, but sine 2x is becoming 0 much before pi at pi by 2 only. Next, we know that at 3 pi by 2, sine is minus 1. But sine 2x is becoming minus 1 much before 3 pi by 2 at 3 pi by 4 only. And so on. This basically results in what? See, the green graph, if you see, that is the graph of sine, it is completing one cycle in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Yes, one complete cycle it is, you know, completing in 0 to 2 pi interval. Whereas, if you look at the pink graph, it is completing one cycle in the interval 0 to pi only. In fact, in 0 to 2 pi, it is able to complete two entire cycles. Yes, so sine is completing one cycle in 0 to 2 pi, whereas sine 2x is completing two entire cycles in 0 to 2 pi. This simply means that if you take the graph of sine and you shrink it horizontally two times, you will get the graph of sine 2x. That's it. That's the observation from here. In fact, to convince you more on this, let me show you this simulation. Okay, let's check this out. Right now, the graph that you can see is the graph of sine ax, where a is equal to 1. That means this is the graph of sine x. 
you can clearly see in the interval 0 to 2 pi it is able to complete one entire cycle right now let me replace a with 2 this is the graph of sine 2x you can clearly see that in the interval 0 to 2 pi this graph is completing two entire cycles yes now i'm replacing a with 3 this is the graph of sine 3x and what's happening here in the interval 0 to 2 pi carefully observe it is able to complete three cycles this simply takes me to the conclusion that if you have the graph of sin x with you and you shrink it horizontally along the x axis by a times you end up getting the graph of sin ax where a is a number strictly greater than 1 in fact this is not just confined to sin x this is valid for every function f if you have the graph of f of x with you and you shrink it horizontally along the x axis a times you end up getting the graph of a times f of x where a is strictly greater than 1 got it next it's time to address case 2 okay that means what is the graph of or how to plot the graph of f of ax from the graph of f of x if a is a fraction strictly between 0 and 1 Again, let's understand this from this example. So in here, I have the graph of sine x with me. Let me take this as f of x. Okay, and I want the graph of f of half of x, which is sine of x by 2. Okay, in here deliberately, I have drawn the graph of sine x in the interval 0 to 4 pi. Let's in the same interval 0 to 4 pi plot the graph of sine x by 2. Let's begin. If x is 0, sin x by 2 gives me sin 0, which is again 0. If x is pi, sin x by 2 gives me sin pi by 2, which is 1. If x is 2 pi, sin x by 2 gives me sin pi, which is 0. If x is 3 pi, then sin x by 2 gives me sin 3 pi by 2, which is minus 1. And if x is 4 pi, sin 4 pi by 2 becomes sin 2 pi, which is equal to 0. When I join these points, this is the graph of sin x by 2 that I get. So now you have both the graphs with you in the same Cartesian plane. The green one is sine x, the pink one is sine x by 2. What can you observe? See, it's very simple. If you just focus on 0 to 2 pi interval, the green graph is able to complete one cycle. Whereas in the same interval 0 to 2 pi, the pink graph has only completed half cycle. If I talk about the interval 0 to 4 pi, the green graph is able to complete two cycles, whereas the pink graph has only completed one cycle in 0 to 4 pi. That simply gives you the answer. If you take the graph of sin x and you expand it, stretch it horizontally along the x axis two times, just two times, you will end up getting the graph of sin x by 2. Yes, that's it. In fact, if you would have had sine x by 3 as the function, the answer is of the same fashion. If you have the graph of sine x with you, just stretch it, expand it along the x-axis by 3 times. You are going to end up getting the graph of sine x by 3. Okay? And this observation is not just confined for sine function. It is actually relevant for every function f. If you have the graph of f with you, you just need to stretch it horizontally along the x-axis by a times. You will end up getting the graph of f of ax where a is specifically a fraction between 0 and 1. Okay? And that ends my discussion over the transformation horizontal stretch. And we have obtained the answer what? That if a is strictly greater than 1, then you take the graph of f of x with you and you shrink it along the x-axis by a times, you will get the graph of f of ax. And if a is a fraction strictly between 0 and 1, then take the graph of f and stretch it horizontally along the y-axis a times, you will end up getting the graph of f of ax. Okay? For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.